first became a supporter of Console after uh, the success of the gathering, which is a book, I, a novel I wrote, about a woman who's bereaved through suicide. And I did well enough out of that pain. Um, it was, um, of all the things that I was asked about in that book, the suicide of Liam, the central character, was the thing I just didn't have to make up. It was just there. It was a kind of, it was as natural as, as I don't know, rain <laughs> uh, to, 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 to put it into this narrative. Um, and uh, I did a lot of interviews about the book. But one day I did 38 or 58, I'm not sure which. I did 38 or 58 interviews. And uh, people asked me, Pretty much everything, you know, journalists are quite aggressive, some of them intrusive, quite sensationalist, quite, you know, or not really onside and admiring. And they, they asked me every question you could think of, but they never asked about bereavement and they never asked about suicide. These were the two most obvious things to shake me down on. Have you ever known someone who's killed themselves? Have you ever been bereaved? Have you ever yourself thought about suicide? And I'd actually, in the public sphere, written about suicidal impulses. But no, they wanted to say, ask, why are you so wonderful? Or why are you so horrible? Or what's your sense about it? And it just seemed to me that if they couldn't discuss, I mean, if all these people couldn't discuss the book, what was going on, that there was such taboo, such aversion, such shame and such privacy about this subject of our relationship to our own death and our relationship to other people's deaths and the idea uh, that, that will has something to do with that as opposed to fate or destiny or God or illness. Um, so I'm very happy to contribute to this book, to add to the conversation um, I have nothing really large to say about suicide. Fiction writers, it's a truism of fiction that we don't know what's going on in other people's heads. Nowhere does it become more apparent than in the case of suicide. Um, I want to, uh, so I want to say, very happy to keep the conversation going um, in the introduction to this book. I have two people I want to thank particularly about for this. First is Robbie Doyle. Um, Paul appeared in my living room and told me to do this book, and then I burgled Roddy Doyle's hard drive and uh, got a story out of him. And you might think that it's a really easy thing to give a story for a collection like this, but Roddy had to turn down the New Yorker, you know, <laughs> and say, I have nothing in, I have nothing in my bottom drawer, because uh, maybe he did, maybe he did, he didn't say that. But this book is all fresh work. None of it is rehashed, none of it has been published elsewhere. So when you're putting it on your Christmas list, that is one of the big draws. And the hero of this volume, the heroine of this volume, is Sinead Gleason. <laughs> if you want to get something done as a busy person, um, journalist, Peter, maybe you're not busy if you're tweeting all the time. <laughs> That I said, <laughs> a possibility. Um, who did what I think is an extraordinary editorial job. She has produced a, 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 a slice, a, a moment of Irish time for us here. What was being published in 2000, I mean, what, what was being written in the last year, an extraordinary list of writers, editorially brilliant selection and uh, so I think we all owe her something more than just a kind of nod, you know, more than a nod. This chick really knows what she's doing. <laughs> um, and so that's to be celebrated as well, the amount of diversity and vivacity that's present in this volume. Um, so it gives me great pleasure because usually when you're doing something as a writer, it's all about a deep and meaningful exchange, person to person, you know. It's not about the money. <laughs> this time, it's about the money. <laughs> uh, the nuts and bolts work that's been done by Console is supported by uh, the money that you give to buy this book. So, buy many of them. 
and tell all your friends. Thank you very much. I want to say a lot of thank yous, first of all, but I should probably tell you where the idea of this book came about. Um, Paul mentioned talking to Anne and heading to Anne, and about 18 months ago, um, before I worked on the works, there was a TV program called The View, and one night on that show, we reviewed a book called The Forgotten Moss, the great novel by Anne, and I met Anne months before. We, I interviewed her at the time, you know, the Booker Prize for the gathering. And that morning, I opened my email to find an email from Anne Enright that started off with, you've had the bad fortune to... And I thought, oh my God, I thought it was good, I said I liked it, what you going to say? <laughs> um, and she said, gave my book a good review, and I thought when somebody asked me, you'd be a good editor for this book, your name is Brian from Berlin. Thanks, um, and right from the start, I thought, yes, I would like to do this project. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it's for a very worthy cause. And I asked Anne, do you have a publisher? And she said, no. And I said, do you have any stories? And she said, I've got one from Ronnie Doyle. Um, and that was it. Um, and it's been a long journey to coax lots of writers and people to do, get involved in this project. Um, the first person I want to thank is Ronnie Kuhn, who was, is not only doing all the publicity for this book, but was the person who got me involved with New Island and was very kindly uh, helped me up with uh, New Island's commissioning editor own person, Alan Edwin. Um, and right from the start, I thought I'd have to push them very hard and convince them, and well, they didn't. They said, this is a great idea and a great project, and I didn't even have a lot of the writers on board. So then began the hunt. Um, there's lots of the writers in the room tonight, and all of them are based in Ireland. And all of these people, I couldn't believe that they handed over work for free without much quibble. Uh, because I wanted to support something and be part of something. There's new one. Um, and I basically just want to say a few thank yous, if that's okay, particularly to, to Gwanya, to Owen and Edwin at New Island, to Anne Enright for suggesting me, I think, maybe, um, to Paul Kelly for his tremendous work at consulting. Um, I want to thank Adrian Crowley, who gave me a wonderful line from the story. It's actually my husband's team who's here who suggested Adrian's book. Oh, there it is. Um, and the wonderful line, which I think is very optimistic and suggests the idea of the stories thread together and you know, being about optimism and reaching out. There's lots of great lyrics in that song about beacons of light and being determined and surviving. Um, I'd like to thank my brother Martin Gleason, who I gave him a couple of ideas about stuff and he sent me loads of wonderful covers and I love this one a lot. And I just want to say thank you so much for your wonderful design, which I love. Um, I'd like to thank Jeff Martin, who and then the wonderful pop, I keep saying pops, they're for children because I have two <laughs> pop um, which stand behind me in downstairs. Um, and I finally want to say a huge thank you to all of the writers who, as I say, gave their work so generously and were brilliant. Lots of them wrote stories from scratch just to be part of this project, which I wouldn't have expected. Um, and I want to say thank you to them. I'd really like to say thanks to all of you for coming and to everybody who's tweeted about the book or talked about it or reviewed it and tried to raise the profile of it. Um, the last thing I want to say is I'm delighted to see my friend Laura James here and I'd like to dedicate the book to uh, the memory of a very good friend, uh, Derek Dalton, who's much missed. Thank you.